everybody it's Wendy and today we are going to make a necklace using some leather and some beautiful beads um, so I uploaded a video the other day <laughs> using leather and I don't know what happened to my camera but apparently it cut out like right in the middle and it cut out most of the finishing of my necklace so I'm gonna make another one today similar to what I made the other day this one is a little bit different but um, I'm gonna show you everything you're going to need now I want to say please before you ask a question um, on the comments I don't mind anybody asking questions on the comments but please check the description box below the video <laughs> to see if your question is answered there because um, I will put links to a lot of things. I will put a link to my blog that shows links to all of my tools that I use, which is a question I get a lot. Um, so yeah, I will put links to everything that I have a link for, <laughs> okay? So, um, and then, you know, if you have a question that's not answered down there, feel free to ask, but just um, check down there before you ask about the products because I will put links to a lot of these things down there, okay? So what we're gonna be using today is we are going to be using this beautiful leather. Now this is from Antique Cord. I did an unboxing the other day and I will link that. This is number 36 and I believe the color of this was ice blue. It is one millimeter leather and I don't know if you can see. Yeah, there you can see it. It is a really, really pretty like light, light blue or almost ice blue is a good name for it but it's a one millimeter leather it's very soft and supple and I have to say I really like this company's product so far you know I've just started using leather but I think this is beautiful the colors they have are so pretty and again that's antique cord on Etsy and I will um, put the information in the description box below so we're going to be using some of this one millimeter leather. Now you can use any leather that you have, obviously. It doesn't have to be one millimeter either, but you know, that's just what I'm using. Um, I'm using this Swirly Tree of Life pendant. This is on my website if you're interested in it. Um, I am using some really pretty like turquoise fire polish with some black in them. These are absolutely gorgeous. I don't know where these came from. Probably someone gave them to me and I had them in with my stock before I started labeling things. Beth sends me a lot of fire polish. Lynn has sent me fire polish. Um, Barb, um, Michelle, just different people have sent me fire polish. So it may have come from one of you guys. Um, I can't remember. I'm sorry. I need to, I started labeling things now, but back then I didn't, but those are beautiful. These fire polish beads, I think, or maybe these are just faceted rounds. They look like faceted fire polish though. These came from Sam's Bead Box, okay, or Sam's Bead Shop. They actually came in the um, subscription box, so they are just absolutely beautiful. We're going to be using those. These two Tree of Life beads came from Sam's Bead Shop, and I think these are so, so pretty. Um, yeah, I love these so much. So we're going to be using these in the necklace and these are really interesting. They, it depends on what side you use as to what color and what texture. I mean, they're just very, um, detailed. They have a lot to them. So I found, I think it was these two sides match the closest on this one, I think. Yeah, maybe, or maybe it was those two. I don't know. But anyway, we're using those. Those came from Sam's Bead Shop. Um, I've got some Indicolite colored bicones here. These are actually Swarovski, and I don't know where I got them. I probably ordered them from somewhere, or maybe I even got them from... No, I didn't get these from work. I don't know where I got them, but anyway. These are some um, tiny black bicones, 4 millimeter. These are 6. Um, I don't know if I still do. Actually, I do have bicones. Six millimeter bicones, very, very close to this color on my website. I'm looking at them right now. Um, so if you're interested in that, they're there. They're six millimeter. They're not Swarovski, but they look very similar to these. These are some frosted agate beads. I think I ordered these from Beadbox Bargains, but it's been a long time, so I cannot guarantee that they <laughs> still have them on their website. But they're a frosted agate bead. These uh, wavy spacers, I'm going to be using these. They're on my website. And, um, whoops, these little five petal bead caps. I love these. If you watch me very often, you know, I use these all the time. They're one of my favorite bead caps and they're on my website too, in a bunch of different colors. I actually have these now in antique bronze too, or antique copper. I think it's antique copper. I only had them in two silver, the antique and the bright silver, but now I have them in antique copper too. Um, you're going to need two 
clamshell covers. These are on my website as well. You're going to need a few crimp beads. You may need more clamshell covers. I haven't quite decided the style I want to do with this necklace. I just pulled out a bunch of beads that I like together and have a general idea. So you may need more clamshell covers, but just pull some out and some crimp beads. One lobster claw clasp. These are cord ends, glue in cord ends or crimp. You can crimp these as well. And this one millimeter leather fits up in these perfectly. Honestly, I think these came in a boss's bead bag from Fire Mountain Gems. I've had them forever. I have never used them much, so I don't really remember where they came from. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that they were in one of the boss's bead bags. So that's those. I've got two uh, fold-over cord ends. Now, I have these on my website, but they're bigger. This is a really small one, um, but you could use the bigger ones if you wanted to. I just, the small one's going to work better with the one millimeter leather. Now, if you had your leather doubled, um, then the bigger ones would work good. But, and then we're using some Swarovski crystals. These are Indicolite PP24, and these are Jet 19s. So, we're going to be using those. You're going to need a little bit of tiger tail. I've got Beadalon 49 strand. Now, um, this is the bright, but it looks antique silver to me, but anyway. Um, somebody asked me the other day in a question in the comments. I didn't totally understand what you were asking, but um, asking if you could use tiger tail in place of wire, like I was wire wrapping. And no, I don't think that you can wire wrap with tiger tail. I, I don't think that would work. I don't think that I would do that. But um, yeah, I... It's completely different texture. Like the tiger tail doesn't really stay wrapped um, like wire does. So I would definitely not try to wire wrap a tiger tail. I hope that's what you were asking. I wasn't really sure. I didn't totally understand. Um, so if that's not what you were asking, <laughs> then just clarify for me and I'll try to figure it out. Um, these are some little spacer beads. These are on my website in a 4 millimeter and a 2.5 millimeter, I think. Um, these are just mixed up. They're all from my stash, but I'm just going to grab some out. I think they're about probably the four millimeter size. Um, and you're going to need head pins, eye pins, jump rings, um, and possibly, or you're going to need some E6000 for sure. So I've got my E6000 here and my little toothpicks and my little toothpick with the wax. Where's it at? It's down here that I use and if you've watched very many of my videos you know that I use this beeswax it comes in this big chunk at Hobby Lobby over with the leather working stuff and that's what I use to pick up my crystals and it works really well and that's what I've done at work for years and so yeah that's what I'm doing okay I think that's everything of course you're going to need your jewelry tools um you know whatever you've got in jewelry tools you'll need to pull those out and I think that's all and if there's something that we end up needing then I'll try to make sure I'll link it below but I think that's all we're gonna need okay so I'm just gonna set some of these things aside out of the way and the first thing we're gonna do is work with our tree and our crystals now you don't have to do this or you could even you know if you don't have Swarovski or any crystals you don't have to use Swarovski you can use any brand but if you don't have crystals you could hang um, little dangles from your tree I mean, just use your imagination. You could do anything. I just thought, I love this indica light color, and I thought it went really well with these trees of life, and so that's my thought there. I just wanted to bling it up a bit. Um, so here's what we're going to do. And the way that I use my glue is it's going to be dried up in the end of the tube. This tube is super old, and I just keep using it because <laughs> I hate to waste it, but it is really, it's getting gelled up in there even. <laughs> So I may have to open a new one. I don't know. Let me see if I can get some good glue out. Yeah, that'll probably be okay right there. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my tree. I want to decide which way I want to hang it. Because it does go like this. I mean, you can point it different ways. I think I'm going to go this way. I'm going to take a tad bit of glue. You don't need a whole lot. And like I said, my glue is like so old. And I'm just going to... Um, Put a little bit on the tree there and then pick up my crystal these stick right to the beeswax usually like this and you set them in your glue and they come right off this is a great way to pick them up so it's getting kind of loose on there and I'm just going to put my crystal down on my tree now you want to lay this if you're using your bead mat 
you want to lay this on something plastic here we go because you don't want to glue your tree to your bead mat and I've done that many many times and it's frustrating because then you pull it up and there's fuzz all over the back of your tree and your bead mats got a hole in it <laughs> so all right and we're just going to keep look at this glue it is so thick oh my gosh I'm going to have to throw this tube away but I hate to but yeah it's really old okay so let's see I've got one there I think I'll put one right here another blue one and one down here I just want to kind of spread them out you can do it however you want to do it I just thought this would be pretty it would give it a little bit of sparkle and these are the pointed chatons so I'm trying to kind of um you know put them in a place where there's a little bit of a a hole for them to go through just because they're the pointed pointed backs if you had flat backs you could just about glue them anywhere but and you really can with these pointed they're so tiny but I just want to try to make them go down in a little hole because I feel like it'll be a little bit more secure I'm gonna put one over here just like this okay and <laughs> this glue oh my gosh that's unbelievable <laughs> so so thick um it's kind of funny at work we use so much of it that it never had a chance to get thick like that before you know we were done with the tube so but this is old and I don't glue Swarovski crystals every day at home so it's just really really old getting thick it's yucky all right so there's my blue let's see I'd kind of like to Get one up in here too, right there. And I actually, in my mind, get in there now. In my mind, I was debating using the black. I just kind of wanted to bring some of the black down, and it would help tie it in together. But I don't know if it's going to need the black or not. I think I may just leave it with the blue. I'm going to put one more because I have one more. I'm going to stick it right here in this spot. And I think I'm just going to leave it at that. I don't want to do too much and I didn't really care for the black down in there. So we'll just leave it with these little blue crystals. Make sure they're sitting flat. Just kind of touch them if you need to make them sit flat. And then just set this aside for a few minutes and we're going to let it set up and it it sets up pretty good in about 20 minutes okay let me put the lid back on this glue <laughs> all righty get that out of the way we're done with the glue okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to string up our tiger tail section okay so the the tree your big tree is going to hang in the middle of your tiger tail section okay just like this and so I just want to string this up I'm not quite even sure how I want to do it so let me lay my tree back down over here because I'm gonna to have to be able to look at it see what I want to do um, okay so I think what I will do is a fire polish bead actually I may go ahead yeah I'm gonna go ahead and crimp this and put the clamshell cover on just so it doesn't fall apart on me and you want to put your clamshell on first not like I just did I don't want all my beads to fall off one end while I'm stringing and I don't have my bead bugs out here so I'm just going to put this crimp bead on I'm going to crimp it down pretty good make sure it's tight pull this up here and close that up okay so here's my tiger tail. I'm going to go ahead and cut this other end. don't think I'm going to need any more than that. So I don't know. I've got about a 10 inch length there. And probably that's too much. But I just want to be sure. <laughs> okay. Let me get some of these guys out here. Alright. So I'm going to do a spacer bead. One of these little fire polish. And then I'm going to do these and the way I do these, okay, so I do one, if you can see, these are cupped. These are wavy spacer beads. So I'm going to do one facing up, 
Then I'm going to do one facing down. So if you see how they kind of lay um, variegated there. Then I'm going to do another one facing up. Nope, I did that wrong. Facing up. And another one facing down. I just love the way these look. I think they're so cool. They give a lot of texture to a necklace. And I just think they're really pretty. And then I'm going to do another fire polish bead. Okay, then I'm going to do a bead cap. One of these bigger guys. And I'm just stringing. I'm not paying attention. I'm just, you know, I'm not, I don't have an idea in my mind. I'm just kind of doing it how I think it's going to look good. Okay, we're going to add a bicone, black bicone in here. And then I'm going to do a bead cap, one of these guys, another bead cap, and then I'm going to do back-to-back -back bead caps. This is another thing I like to do. So I'm going to put this one facing opposite this one, another one of these guys, and then your bead cap the correct way. And that's what you get. I just think it's really cool. It's pretty. It gives it a cool element. Okay. Then I'm going to do, let's see here. These guys, I think I'm going to do links on the side with them. So I'm not going to put them on yet. Um, I'm going to do, oh, I forgot these bicones. So let's do this bicone. And then another fire polish. Well, let's do another black bead. Okay, another fire polish bead. And then I'm going to do some more of these spacers. So I'm going to do one again facing up, one facing down, another one facing up. Whoops. And another one facing down. Another fire polish bead. And there's what I've got so far. And then I think I'm just going to repeat the pattern. So do I have, let's see what I've got here. Yeah, I'm going to do um, another bead cap, large fire polish bead, bead cap, bicone, and then my little um, frosted agate, or yeah, frosted agate beads. So this one, I'm going to do the bead cap on here. Then layer them back to back. Frosted agate bead and another bead cap. Just like that. Okay, so here we are. So I need my big bicone. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a black bicone and another black bicone. And this is where I will hang my tree in between these two bicones. Okay, because now I'm going to go back up the pattern. So I need this bicone. So where we went forward this way, now we're going to start here and go back so it mirrors. Okay, so this bicone. Then the bead caps, we're just repeating the pattern. That's all we're doing. Bead cap, frosted bead, bead cap, bead cap, frosted bead, and bead cap. Okay, so if you can see, this is going to mirror this. Then we need our black. Bicone. We need a, am I out of bead caps? No, here they are. Bead cap. Fire polish bead. Bead cap. Okay, so we're right here. We need our small fire polish. And we need four of our spacers. So one facing up. 
actually one facing down because we're starting, we're going backwards. So this one would be down, this one would be up, this one would be down, and this one would be up, just like this. Okay, and I mean, if you don't get those exactly right, it's not really going to matter. I mean, they're fine. They sit crooked, you know, not crooked, but I don't know. They sit like that anyway, so it's not a huge deal if you don't get it just right, but I'm just trying to mirror it. So, and then, so we've got our fire polish, our other bicone, our bigger bicone, and then our bead caps again. So, bead cap frosted agate bead, bead cap, back-to-back um, -back bead cap, frosted agate bead, and a bead cap. Okay, so here's where we are now, right here. So we need a bicone. We need a bead cap our bigger fire polish bead, uh, another bead cap, smaller fire polish, and then our spacers. So this one facing down. Or did I do that wrong? Nope. Okay, opposite. Okay, just like that. Then our other small fire polish and our silver spacer. And we're done with our little beaded section down here. Just like that. Okay, so our tree is going to hang right here in the middle. And then we have everything mirrored. So let me just look at mine and make sure because I'm notorious for missing something. So let me just make sure I'm going to take it, lay them side by side, make sure everything is correct, and it is. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my other clamshell, and my other um, bead. Now, one thing you want to do, see how I'm turning this, bending it, making sure it's a little bit flexible. You don't want this to be stick straight. If you put this really tight, it's going to be stick straight and it's not going to hang pretty. So it needs to have a little bit of room, especially, you know, you're going to put your tree in there. So just, you know, make sure it's not super tight. I mean, you don't want your beads floating on it, like running all around on your chain, but, or your uh, stringing stuff, but you do want it to be you know, just fairly flexible so it can move around and not be stiff. Okay, so just crimp that bead down. Cut your tiger tail. Make sure that's crimped really good. Yep, and then close it up. All right, so here's our little beaded section. Just like this. I don't know where those bead caps, there they are, okay. So, this is what we've got, and we're going to hang our little tree, so let me grab a jump ring. Um, these oval jump rings, these are on my website too, and I really, I like them. I like the oval jump rings. I feel like they're really secure. Because your cut is in the middle, not at the bottom. So, naturally, with gravity, this is going to hang when I get it on here, I'll show you what I mean. Let me go ahead and get it around the bicones. Whoop, let me do that first. Okay, put our tree on. So when I close this up, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so if you can see when this hangs, the cut is here in the middle. Gravity is going to make this hang because it's an oval. And that cut will stay in the middle. So if that opens up, you know, it can still open up. But if a round jump ring opens up right there, it's going to fall off immediately. This 
I just feel like it's a little more secure. It has less chance of your thing falling off because of the way the jump ring hangs. But, you know, it's probably not that much more secure, but I, I just feel like it is. <laughs> so I like those. They're on my website if you're interested, the oval jump rings. Alrighty, so here's what we've got. So now I want to make a connecting link. I like these trees and I want to definitely use them in this. So I'm going to make a link here to connect the leather to this. So I'm going to grab an eye pin. There are an awful lot of head pins in my eye pin container, I'm noticing. <laughs> and you need to grab a fairly long one. There's a really long one. That would work great. Because I'm going to make, I want to make a kind of long link. I don't think I have another eye pin that long, though. <laughs> That's the, like, one and only. <laughs> he's, he's an aberration. Um, okay, so there's a couple. <laughs> um, so what I want to do here is I want to take, let's see, what do I want to do here? Um, there we go. I would kind of like to use some of these here too. So let's see how this works. If I put on this bead, this bead, this facing down, and this one facing up. I just want to see if it'll even fit on the eye pin and be able to make, I don't think it's going to. Um, down, up. Um, yeah, actually, maybe it will. So I like that link right there. That's pretty cool. I think. I don't know. I'm almost tempted just to put the bead in the spacers and not these other beads. Let me look at that. See, this is how I design. I, I have to, you know, try things and see how they work. So I am going to put a silver spacer. But I'm going to put him facing down, him facing up. Down and up. I'm going to do four of them. Down and up. And then this bead. Or maybe another little spacer and then this bead. So it sits better in there. I kind of like that. Just because it's not as, it showcases this bead a little bit better. So let me, let me see what it looks like all put together. And one more spacer. Well, where's the hole? There we go. I've even got my glasses on. All right, let's look at that. I kind of like it, but I think, <laughs> I know you guys are like, ah, I think I'm just going to do the two. This is how I design though, guys. I have to see it. I can't, I mean, I can envision something in my head. But until I sit down and do it, <clears throat> you know, I have to sit down and do it. So, sorry if that drives you nuts. Okay. There we go. I like this the best, I think. It really showcases that bead. It kind of frames the bead, but it doesn't overpower it. So, let's go ahead and make a loop. So, I'm going up a little bit above my bead and doing a 90 degree angle. I'm going to cut this right about here. I don't... I don't measure that. I mean, I just kind of eyeball it because I know from doing so many <laughs> where I like it. But, you know, you may need to measure yours or whatever. But I like my loops not to be huge. So, um, I just kind of know where I like them. That's just something that comes with practice and making a lot of loops. Okay. So, there's that. I do like that. I like that better than trying to add a bunch of beads on it. The beads just kind of take away from the beauty of that tree, tree bead. Okay, so let's do the same thing over here. Facing down, facing up, tree bead. Oh, I need another spacer, and I've got some, get my bright ones out here. Tree bead. Okay, and then we got a spacer. This facing down, this one facing up, and another spacer bead. So there we have it. Yeah, that's really pretty. I really like that. <laughs> if you hear noises, Sadie's snoring. She's like really snoring. <laughs> She's 
totally zonked out. Cat must have kept her up half the night. Oh, I may have made that loop too small. Go down on there. Alright. My little spacer beads trying to climb up in there. There we go. Oh, that works. Okay, so there we have it. Gosh, I love these beads. They're so pretty. Okay, so here's what we've got so far. Now, I am thinking, I'm going to put my leather on next. I know that, but I'm thinking about making a double strand. Putting some leather on here too and hanging something here. I think that would be really pretty. Even if it's just like a, a dangle, a small dangle or something. I do have other trees of life. Well, let's do the let's do the um, the sides first. Okay, so we're going to hook these together eventually, and then I'm going to use the cord ends on my leather. So oh, we are going to need our glue again. I thought we were done with it, but we're not. Actually, this cord end crimps down, I think, but I am going to glue it because I don't trust it not one bit. <laughs> so I'm going to coat my leather. Just the tip here with some glue. This. I'm going to stick it right up in here. And you know, it it may not even go up in there very well, but I'm going to try anyway. So there's what we've got. We've got a little glue sticking out. Just wipe that off. Okay. And then I'm going to take my pliers and see this middle piece right here? You can just take that and crimp it right down. I love these things. I need to order some more because they only, like I said, I just got these two that came in this boss's bead bag, but they're very cool. You just crimp the middle right there, crimp it right down, and it stays. I like to glue it just because I'm, you know how I am with that. I'm nervous that things come apart. All right, so now I'm going to do about five inches of this leather because this is pretty long here in itself and I don't want this necklace to be super long I want it to be a little bit long but not super long so let's do let's go over here and do five inches of the leather okay which will be about right here and honestly I know that doesn't look like much but by the time you get your ending on I think it's going to be long enough I may do five and a half just to be safe Okay, so yeah, five and a half inches of the leather. Okay, let me glue my other one in just to be sure that I get them the same length. <laughs> Can't get over this glue. It is just like, part of it is the humidity. It's very hot here today too. It's like going to be 91 degrees today. And it sets up quicker when it's hot out. That is one issue, but it's just old glue. All right, so we're going to scoot him right up in here. I don't know if the glue helps it or not. I think it does, but <laughs> probably it's fine without it. But I just feel more secure with it. And then I crimp this down. And I've glued my plier. <laughs> okay, so crimp this other side down. And I think that's pretty secure. This one doesn't feel like, I don't feel like it crimped as well as the other one did, but maybe it did. I guess it did. It's pretty secure. Okay, so then I'm just going to match these two up like this. And cut them even. There's my cutters. Okay, just like that. Now, this, this leather is so pretty. Okay, so I definitely do want to do a middle thing here because I like this leather and I really want to, I, I want a little bit more of it in the necklace. So, what I'm going to do is hook it in right here uh, where these connect. So I kind of want it, I have to figure out how low I want it to hang. Or I could hook it in up here. 
I may do that. Let me put the necklace together first, just to be, because that'll help me to figure out kind of how I want to do it. So I'm going to grab a couple of these oval jump rings. Um, and I'm going to hook these together. I like to hook them together with jump rings because I feel like it makes it um, just hang better. Got glue on me. Okay. So I'm just going to hook these together right here. Close it up. You don't have to hook it together with jump rings. You can just hook your link to your um, clamshell if you want, but I like to use jump rings. Small ones. I just feel like it makes it hang nicer than if you don't. Okay, and then we'll do this other one. If you hear Chris talking, he's actually on the phone. He's working. We both work from home now. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, we were at church last night, and there we were in this class on how to study the Bible. And the guy was, you know, talking about being observant. Okay, we're going to hook these together with a jump ring as well. And um, he said, um, he said, close your eyes and think about how many red lights you pass on your way to work. And both Chris and I were like, none, because <laughs> now we're both home. But he was just saying, you know, do you pay attention to the things around you? Are you observant? It was really interesting class. I enjoyed it to so much. And, um, but it was kind of funny because we both looked at each other. We're like, yeah, no red lights for either one of us. We work from home. Both of us do. <laughs> so he's down there on the phone with a doctor or somebody. All right. So we're hooking these together. All right, so here's what we've got. So let's look and see how we want this leather to hang. So when we put this up here, I think I'm going to hang it from this point because it'll almost make it look like it's connected. I think that'd be kind of cool. So what I want to do, I'm going to need something slightly heavy on here to make it... Um, Hang right. So let me grab, I'm going to grab another Tree of Life charm. Just one second. Okay, so here's what I've got. I actually could hang a third one of these beads from there. I think that would be really pretty. And I may do that. I kind of like that. Okay, so this leather, the way that I figure out on multi-layer necklaces how I want it to hang is I lay it kind of like it would be if I was wearing it. So if I'm wearing it, you know, it's going to spread out a tad bit. It's going to be probably right about like this. And then I'm going to take my leather and put it where it's going to join. And I want to, I want it to be right about this length. So I'm going to cut it right here. It's really not hard to measure those. You just have to lay them out and just kind of measure it like you would if you had it on you and how you want it to hang. So now we've got this guy here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a link, just like the ones I made on these sides, but I'm gonna use a head pin, if I can find a long one, enough one. Here's one. Okay, so I'm gonna use a head pin, and I'm gonna make a link that matches these links right here. So I'm gonna do my tiny spacer, one of these facing down, one facing up, my, whoops, another spacer, my tree bead, shove that on there, <laughs> and then another spacer, okay, my bead facing down, my bead facing up, another spacer, and that's going to be my length, it's going to go right there, and I'm just going to make a loop. And I'm glad I was able to incorporate another one of these beads in here. I really like these. I think they're so pretty. He had them in different colors, too. Like, there was a lighter one. Like, a, I think it was a B one. I don't know. They're, you need to get on his site and look. They're just absolutely gorgeous beads. And uh, 
I'd been eyeing them for a while, so <laughs> I was glad to get them. Now this one I am just going to hang directly on the leather. Okay? Because it's not going to be bound up by anything, and I think that it'll flow just fine, hung right on there. All right, now what I've got to do is hook my leather in here on the sides. So, let's see. I may cut it just a tad bit shorter, actually. Just cut a little bit off there. Okay. Because I don't want it to be hanging, touching that. All right, so um, I'm not going to put any other beads on it because I want the leather to show. I just think it's pretty like this. And so I'm going to grab, do I want to do this with clamshells? Yes, probably, because I don't think I have any more. I wish I had a couple more of those little, um, these little cord in things, but I don't. So it's going to have to be a clamshell. That's all I've got. <laughs> so let me get a couple clamshells out here. And I have them with open loops and closed loops, and I prefer the closed loop ones. So that's what I'm trying to grab out. Or two of the closed loop ones. They also make them. Look at this one. This came in a boss's bead bag too from Fire Mount Gems. I wish I had another one of those, but I think I just have the one. But they're pretty. And they also make these side fold over ones. Actually, that would be really good for this. I don't know if I have another one though. Let me look at what I've got. I'll be right back. Okay, so I actually found a couple of these flowery ones. I think these are pretty cool. So we're going to use that. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the leather and put it right through the bottom of our clamshell if it'll go. You may have to cut your leather at an angle. Um, you can cut it to where it's kind of like a needle, if you can see that. And hopefully that'll go through here. If not, then I'm not going to be able to use these clamshells. I didn't think about that. Yep, that's not going to work. Unless, where's my beading all? Let me grab my beading all. Sometimes you can make the holes in them bigger. Let's try that. I'm telling you guys, if you if something doesn't work, just improvise. <laughs> or try. I mean, you know, try something different. See, that's going to go through. And I'm just going to take my crimp bead. I'm going to put it on the very end. And it a little tight on there, but that's a good thing. I'm going to scoot it down just a tad. There we go. I don't want it on the very, very end. You want it to where it's not going to pop right off the end of your leather. So this is down too far, though. It's sliding down. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to slide this up, and I'm going to crimp him closed. Okay, that's secure. I'm going to close this up. Now, you could put a little dab of glue in there, and I think I may, just to be sure that it's extra secure. <laughs> Get my glue out there. Okay. You could put a little dab of glue in here. Just cover your um, crimp bead with it, and that way you don't really have to worry about your crimp bead coming loose. I don't think it would anyway, because this is pretty tight, but it could. Okay. And then we're just going to close this up. And these are pretty. You know, it's a nice little flower. I wish I had these on my website. I don't, but I may look for them <laughs> to sell on there because they're, they're pretty. Okay. So there's the one side. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Just make this hole bigger with your beading all. Just be careful not to poke your finger because, man, it hurts. I've done it. <laughs> it is not fun. Okay, we're going to stick our leather through. I may have to cut this one too to make it pointed. They also, on this um, antique cord, they also sell 0.5 millimeter leather. And I did get some of that, but I didn't get it in this blue color. And I wanted to use this blue for this. Okay, that makes it go through there really simply. And then we're just going to put a crimp bead on. Let me get a little bit bigger one. Okay. We're going to crimp him down. We're going to put a little glue on him. Just cover him with glue. Alright, and then we're just going to pull this up. And 
and close it. You ha almost have to start closing these with your fingers when you've used the beading all to make the hole bigger because they get open so wide. And just close it up. Perfect. Okay. Now we have our little centerpiece, center strand, and I'm just going to take this and I'm going to hook it right on this jump ring, just like this. And then the way that these open ones work, these aren't my favorite. I like the closed ones much better, but you just take this and just roll it closed. Okay, I'm just not a huge fan because I think, I just don't feel like they're as secure, but I mean, I guess they must be okay because people use them. <laughs> and I'm just going to roll it around there a couple times if I can to make it kind of like a little um, coil and then just close it up with my plier. All right. So there's that one. Then we got to get this one on here. So we want this to lay right. So I kind of, you know, I lay it down here, see how it's going to lay when it's, and just try to make sure things aren't twisted or anything. Okay. And then this one is going to go directly on this one. And again, I'm going to take my round nose pliers and try to make a coil. Okay, like that, and then I just take this and kind of press it. All right, so there that is. I like this. I think it's a very pretty necklace. Okay, now we're going to finish our ends. This is super easy. I've got these little cord fold-over things. You could use your um, clamshells and crimp beads just like we did on the last one, but I'm going to go ahead and do this this way just because I've got it out here and it shows you another way you can do it. A little variety, right? Okay, so this one I am going to take a little glue and I'm just going to lay it. I hold this by the little tab on the top, the little hole. And I'm just going to lay a little glue in there. You don't have to use the glue. I think that it probably would be just fine without it, but again, <laughs> it makes me feel better. <laughs> So I'm going to put that in there, and then, where am I? Blunt nose, flat nose pliers. Okay, so I'm going to take this, and just very gently, I'm going to bend this one over, press it down. You want to do this kind of gently, because you don't want this to pop out before you get this one folded over, and then you kind of fold this one over, and you press them down tight. You can wipe your glue off that's surged out. Okay. And there you have your little fold over and just make sure it's tight. You don't want to cut your leather, but you want it to be tight on there. So it's that simple. Let's do it on the other side. Okay. Just put a little glue in there. Put your leather in. And I just kind of grab the tip of the leather with my thumbnail right there and just hold it. And we're going to fold over. Just like that. I used to fight with these things. I used to hate them. But then I kind of developed the technique of how to hold them and to kind of gently do it. I used to try to like manhandle them, but it's easier if you're a little bit gentle. Okay, so there's that. So now all we need is our ending. So I'm going to grab a jump ring. Let's see. I've got a bigger one here. Again, I'm using the oval. I like these oval jump rings. And I'm just going to put this right on here. Now you could put an extender on if you wanted. And if you did, this is where you would put it. I don't think I'm going to because I'm keeping this one. Make sure your jump ring is closed up good. And then we're just going to take a smaller jump ring, get the glue off my pliers and my fingers, it's everywhere. I'm going to take a smaller jump ring. We're going to put our lobster on.
And there we have our necklace. So let me grab a form and put this guy on the form and I will be right back. Okay, so here is our finished necklace. So we've got our little tree. My lights are a little too bright for this. There we go. Our little tree with our Swarovski crystals. And we go all the way up here to our leather. And I love it. I think it turned out really, really pretty. Um, I just, like I said, I love these beads so much from Sam's Bead Shop. They are so pretty. Absolutely beautiful. I may go back and get them in some different colors. But, whoops. So, so pretty. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe. Hit the bell. If you don't hit the bell, you don't know when I'm uploading. And now that I'm home, I'm going to be uploading a lot more. So um, I will have links for everything that I have a link for in the description box below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.